Hello everyone. Today we will be solving two problems from kinematics of rigid body. The first problem will be problem 31 of chapter 16 of your textbook. So the problem is asking for the distance that the load W will be traveling in five seconds. If the input would be the angular velocity of 104 plus C. So our motor provides an input and we wanna find the output in terms of how far the weight W is traveling. Uh, to find that, first we need to find the angular velocity of our gear D, which is the same as the angular velocity of shaft E. But we can use the gear ratio that we talked about for gear trains. If we wanna find the relation between omega D and omega A, you have two sets of gear in contact. So the numerator would be the product of driving gears. Here, the driving gear for us is gear A and gear C, and gear B and D would be the driven gears. So the radius R A times R C, and in the denominator, we have R B times R D. So here I can write omega D would be RA 40 times RC, which is 30 millimeter. I'm not going to change the units because they're going to cancel out. RB is 225 and RD is 300. Omega D times Omega A. So omega A is 100 for plus T. After multiplication, I can find that Omega D would be 1.78 for plus T. So I found Omega D directly from Omega A you can find omega D by writing the gear ratio between each set of gear, between gear A and gear B, find gear B uh, omega, and then omega B and omega C would be the same, and then find, write the gear ratio again between omega C and omega D and find omega D. Uh, both approaches will yield the same result. Now that we have omega D, we know that omega D e is the same as omega D because we wanna find the distance it travels, first we need to find the angular displacement. The angular displacement or d theta is related to omega. So omega is d theta over dt. Because omega is not constant, so we need to write the derivative form and take an integration from zero to delta theta, omega dt from zero to five seconds. D theta would be simply delta theta. And uh, if we take a derivative of omega dt, omega is 1.78, so we can keep the coefficient. 4 would be 40, and t would be t squared over 2, 0 to <clears throat> 5. If plugging the values, you find delta theta would be 57. 0.85 radian, and we need to remember the unit is radian. Now we find the angular displacement that the shaft E will experience after five seconds with the given angular velocity. We can write a relation between the linear displacement, dx, and angular displacement, d theta. And this radius is our shaft E radius. So if you're interested in finding a displacement dx, zero to delta x dx equals r dt, r is the same, is 0 0.05, and delta theta would be 57.85. Therefore, delta x would be 2.89 meter. So if we 
review the problem, we had an input angular velocity, omega a. We found the output angular velocity for gear D. This type, type of gear train is very common. If you look at the problem, we see that we are moving from gear A to gear B, from small gear to a large gear. But we are reducing the speed and increasing the torque. So we are reducing the speed once here. And then omega C and omega B are the same because they are on the same shaft, they're connected to the same shaft, so they are rotating with the same angular velocity. Omega C, then we, from, from gear C, we move to gear D, from small gear to large gear, so again, we are reducing the speed. This type of gear train that we reduce the speed twice is called double reduction. And we are increasing the torque because our motor can provide enough speed. The problem is the torque that is required to lift our object.